Hello and welcome and welcome to Aiden Eyewitness. It's one of Manchester's more unusual attractions, a must-see for every local and every visitor because the architecture is magnificent. It was closed by the City Council in 1993 and could have been demolished, but local people saved it. There are three pools, one covered over, but you can't swim here. It's only open on certain dates of the year for events such as vintage fairs, concerts, workshops and more. Check the website for more details. Everyone who visits loves it, including Prince Charles. I've done an article about the video and some of the people featured in it. Link in the description. Of all the buildings in Manchester, there's one that, perhaps more than any other, celebrates the city's past, brings people together into a community. A building that never fails to amaze and enchant people whenever they visit that's been cherished and cared for by a dedicated group of people for over 20 years. A location for TV dramas and movies, a venue for events, a unique Grade 2 star listed building that still holds secrets and surprises, that's still an unfinished project, that's still in need of funding, that is yet to achieve its full potential. That building is the Victoria Baths. It's located in Chalton and Medlock, not far from Manchester Royal Infirmary. On the occasion of the opening of the Victoria Baths in September 1906, the Lord Mayor called it Manchester's Water Palace. The building work was overseen by Henry Price, the newly appointed city architect. It was expensive, but there was wealth in Manchester. At that time, many houses had no bathroom, and so the slipper baths became an essential facility for local people. There was a laundry, a Turkish bath and later a sauna. Three swimming pools catered for different sections of society. Males first class, males second class and females. This seems rather shocking today, but at the time, to provide bathing facilities specifically for females was progressive. In the early years, swimming was segregated, but after World War I, families could bathe together. And so the Victoria Baths served the community continuously through years of social upheaval, economic hardship and instability in the world, bringing health, well-being, exercise, enjoyment and sporting opportunities to people of all ages. Pioneering channel swimmer Sonny Lowry trained at the Victoria Baths in the 1930s at certain times of the year, one of the pools was covered over, providing a dance floor. We associate those dances with the World War II years, and from time to time, they're commemorated on public openings. After the war, Manchester went through many changes, often traumatic. In 1952, an aerotone was installed, forerunner of the jacuzzi. But as time passed, the building was slowly deteriorating from within. During the 80s, Manchester suffered the effects of austerity, a doctrine favoured by Mrs Thatcher's Conservative government that dictates that the best way to achieve a healthy economy and society is to continually cut government expenditure, particularly on funding from central government to towns and cities around the country, often the ones most in need of support. In 1993, despite protests, Manchester City Council closed the baths. A group of volunteers got together and the Victoria Baths Trust was set up with the aim of restoring and reopening the baths as soon as possible. Five years later, in 1998, I first went inside the Victoria Baths for my Eyewitness in Manchester website. It was in a bad state, inhabited by pigeons with droppings and other debris everywhere. How could Manchester's water palace have been allowed to deteriorate to this extent? Could this have happened in a city like Vienna or Budapest? A plan to restore the baths was put in place. The aim was to bring the Turkish baths and one of the swimming pools back into use. And then in 2003, the building was entered into the BBC restoration programme. People from across the UK were asked to choose their favourite restoration project. I was there with others to see the live final at the Tower of London. The Victoria Baths won. 
the £3.4 million prize money was used to carry out essential repair work to prepare the building for its future use. Prince Charles visited the baths a month later. The popular BBC TV programme Antiques Roadshow came to the Victoria Baths. It continued to be used as a filming location for TV dramas, including Peaky Blinders and Cracker. Repair work went ahead, but it was found that the costs were going to be much higher than expected. In the meantime, the partially restored Victoria Baths had become popular as a visitor attraction and events venue. More and more people got to see the interior, and many fell in love with it. A large number of volunteers have given their time and effort to maintaining the building and running events. There are heritage and community events, craft fairs, vintage fairs, beer conventions, concerts, workshops, festive winter fairs, and occasionally, just for a few days, the pool is refilled and it's possible to swim. Check the Victoria Baths Facebook page or website and book early. In 2014, the synchronized swimming team, Aquabatics, performed in the main pool. There are guided tours, a cafe, and during some events, there's a bar, and the Victoria Baths now has its own brand of gin. These events help to support the baths and they also provide opportunities for independent craftspeople, artists and performers. There's a very nice gift shop with books about the history of Manchester and the Victoria Baths. A small number of paid staff keep things running. The restoration plans are still in place, but they have yet to be funded. I think it's true to say that in recent years, funding has become more difficult for a project like this though millions are being spent in the current Manchester building boom and the Factory Art Centre in Manchester City Centre is also costing many millions. Why can't Manchester City Council help secure the funds to complete the restoration of the building in time for the 30th anniversary of when they first closed it? And so the Victoria Bath functions as a popular arts and events venue and it's only open on a limited number of days each year. When it's closed, especially during the winter. The interior of the building feels cold and empty. It really needs to have people using it seven days a week. I've heard the words, buildings are just bricks and mortar. It's people that count. These words are often used by decision makers to justify demolition or cost cutting. But bricks and mortar do count. They're a symbol of the aspirations and ambitions of people. The Victoria Baths are the encapsulation in bricks and mortar of the desire of the City of Manchester in times past to care for its residents, especially those in need. Today, local people are taking care of the building and they've formed themselves into a wonderful community of friends and colleagues. During events, there's a very pleasant atmosphere inside the Victoria Baths. You can feel the conviviality, the sense of shared purpose and appreciation. A community of people here to provide support for the Baths, some sadly not here. What does the future hold for the Victoria Baths? As a unique piece of architectural heritage, a visitor attraction and filming location, I think I can say its future is secure, but it remains on the Heritage at Risk Register. The Victoria Baths Trust have stated in their strategic plan that due to the pandemic and other factors, they've had to reassess their goals and priorities. They've come to the conclusion that reopening the building as a home for swimming is not realistic. The Trust will concentrate on preserving the buildings for future generations, offering lots of interesting cultural and recreational events, as well as building a strong community engagement programme. The plan now is not to reopen the baths for swimming, though on special occasions the gala pool can again be filled with water and the public can come in and use it, just for a few days. I hope you found this video interesting, maybe even inspiring. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, post a comment and click the bell button to receive all notifications because I don't have a fixed upload schedule. Vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen. Many thanks for watching. Auf Wiedersehen. See you again soon.